Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story. It will grip you and have you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to watch episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. And each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end from the time that they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And before we start, I do want to thank you for watching what I make and ultimately supporting what I do here with liking, commenting, and sharing. For only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make, watch all of this channel's content early, chat with other fans of the show and even get exclusive videos every month. With that, let's jump into another epic story. 39 days, 18 people, one survivor. Eliza Orleans, a 21-year-old pre-law student from New York, was a castaway on Survivor's ninth season, Survivor Vanuatu. By the time she finished playing, Survivor had seen someone who managed to slip past almost everyone despite having a target on her back all game. So how did she do it? Survivor Vanuatu opens up in a very unique way as Jeff tells the players that they're about to take place in a local ritual and that they need to remember that this is not their homeland and they need to be respectful of what is about to happen. It's going to impact each of you differently. At times you may find it beautiful. At times you may be repulsed. You are in a foreign country. Remember that this is their culture. We are only visitors. This really sets the stage as upon arriving on the beach, this is when we hear from Eliza for the first time as she identifies what exactly is going on when men and women are being separated. It is immediately clear that the men are receiving special treatment, which is strange as she thought they were all gonna be treated equally. They have these big sticks and they start, you know, pulling people out with the sticks, but kind of like, you know, whacking them out. We look over and the guys, you know, like we're like kneeling on a mat and they all have like little like stump feet to sit on and they're like right in the center of the action we're kind of off the side and so I immediately start thinking what's with this I thought we were all supposed to be part of this ceremony during the ceremony the natives kill a live pig in front of everyone which draws a lot of shocked responses especially from Eliza I eat meat and I know that animals are slaughtered but like seeing it was just like <gasps> like I, I literally think I gasped out loud because it was just so shocking to watch. The tribes are then separated by Jeff Probst and each tribe is sent on their way to trek to their camps in the dark. Along the way, the women are fighting over whether to sit and rest for the night or to continue trekking onto camp because they've been walking for a while and they haven't got there yet. Eliza says she wants to state her opinion, but she knows not to be too pushy about it. I didn't want to be too pushy because I didn't want to be like the odd person out. The next morning at camp, we are shown that the older women are hard at work on building a shelter while the younger women are taking what the older women deem to be excessive breaks. Eliza is painted as lazy and a motor mouth by Scout when she is shown talking about work but not actually doing any. I'm really not a negative person. Like I'm awfully optimistic in most cases, but for some reason I just don't think we're gonna get fire from rubbing two like quasi dry sticks together. Well, you know, Eliza, she talks non-stop. She's probably at the top of my list just to get her mouth out of my face, I'm telling you. What is important though is that Eliza is not hanging out with the smaller group. In fact, five women are chillaxing on the beach while four are working. If anything, Eliza is getting good with the majority. We then hear that Eliza thinks that Twyla is working way too hard. Twyla's strong work ethic is making everyone else look bad, including her. Twyla has been working on the shelter constantly. I feel like her continuous work has made those of us who have taken reasonable breaks look bad in her mind to think that, oh, they're not pulling their weight. The women's tribe then receives tree mail and it looks like an immunity challenge is coming up. Eliza then pumps them all up by leading them in a survivor version of I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Yes, our girl's gonna get the gold. Yes, our girl's gonna get the gold. 
It turns out Eliza must be Notre Dame because the women do win immunity and that is it for the premiere episode. So far, Eliza has the most confessionals and it is clear that she will be a major character in the grand story of the season. However, despite her being in the majority group on her tribe, she seems to be in a bad spot strategically since she is rubbing people the wrong way. However, this much focus being put on her seems to say that either she'll be doing something insane very soon and probably getting voted off early or she will be making it far in this game. Let's find out. Episode two starts and Vanuatu may seem beautiful to us. And in fact, I agree. I think this is a beautiful location for the show. But Eliza explains that actually living there is no fun as everything is constantly wet. It's damp. And it just feels like she's essentially trapped in a prison. The beach is uncomfortable. The water's uncomfortable. It's freezing at night. Everything is damp. Like you always feel wet and cold. I mean, it's beautiful like looking at it, but like to live here, it's just so miserable. Things do begin to look up though, as the women win reward, which consists of pillows, blankets, and a hammock. Back at camp, lines are being further drawn in the sand, as Amy explains kind of what we saw in the first episode, which is Eliza is in the majority group of five, while Amy is in the minority group of four. The younger group would be, um, Mia, Julie, Dolly, Eliza, and Lisa. This matters a lot because the women lose immunity and back at camp, Eliza is crying and I can't 100% make out what she is saying, but I am guessing she is sad that they have to vote someone out of the tribe for the first time. Yeah. I just never expected to like everyone so much. <laughs> Dolly, just all. We then see Dolly talking to Julie, who are both part of that bigger group of five, and Dolly says everyone is gunning for Eliza at Tribal, and that includes her. So what's the verdict? I think everyone's saying Eliza. Really? Yeah. For this time, I'm voting with for her because I don't know who else to vote for. Amy finds this out from Dolly and informs Eliza what Dolly said, and this freaks out Eliza for good reason. She does become super paranoid and seems very panicky all of a sudden. However, it is good that Amy gave her this information. Otherwise, Eliza could have easily been blindsided here. What Dolly said was, we'll vote Leanne off now and we'll save Eliza for later. Out of all of those five girls in that alliance that we have, I trust Dolly the least. She then approaches Dolly and asks her about this. Dolly lies and Eliza doesn't believe her answer. She then calculates what her next move should be and she is certain that telling the younger women to vote Dolly will probably put her in trouble at Tribal since she's essentially telling them all to flip on one of their own members. So instead, she flips her vote and votes for Dolly along with the older women. And Dolly goes home five to four. Dolly, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Episode three brings with it the younger women going, what the heck, Eliza? Why did you vote Dolly and not even tell us you were going to do so? She tries to do her best to explain her position and promising that she is still on their side. I thought she was writing my name down tonight. She sat there and looked me in the eye and said, I'm gonna vote for a random person. I, I couldn't get Dude, it. How about cluing us in, Eliza? While to Eliza's face, the women accept this apology and they say, don't worry about it, we believe you. Once they talk to us privately, it seems like not everyone can trust her anymore. Eliza was strong with us, but I guess she conspired with the other girls and decided to vote off Dolly without telling us, so now we don't trust Eliza. Well, I'm not so sure that Eliza is in with us. And even then, I don't know if I trust her. This episode brings with it a twist both tribes are going to tribal council and they are competing for an individual immunity necklace instead of tribal immunity. John of the men's tribe wins the necklace and then Jeff reveals another twist. John will be going back to the women's camp to temporarily talk to them and figure out who he wants to give a necklace to amongst them. Insert Eliza's shocked face. John, you are now going to leave and go back to camp with Yasser. Join them. <laughs> So back at the women's camp, John splits up the tribe between who did and who didn't vote for Dolly. He first talks to the group who did vote for Dolly to figure out what happened. And the first thing Eliza does is throw the four people sitting right in front of her under the bus. These four guys were planning on voting me out uh -huh. last night. What Take that wait back. Minute. Wait a minute. Okay, okay, okay. She then proceeds to way over explain her every thought and reason as to why she voted for Dolly and talks John's ear off despite him really only wanting to know the very basics and she misses all the social clues that he doesn't care. She's voting against me. And then it was trying to play both It was a few, it was, it was a few, it was a few hours before tribal council. That's all I need to know. Eliza just didn't stop talking. She just kept talking and talking and talking. I mean, she seems really sweet. I'm sure she's really nice, but the bottom line is, would you please stop talking? John then goes over to talk to those who 
did not vote for Dolly, and while doing so, Eliza strolls on over uninvited and annoys them and starts a fight, and this is just not good at all. Here she comes, she's gonna work us now. Oh, no, tell her to go away. Well, this no, is our cool. time. I don't Get trust you, Eliza. I, sh let's, not, let's not do this right now. No, Fine, okay. don't trust me. Fine, I will no. go with them. Fine, do you know? I lied. Because then I'm going to be the first one out anyhow. At Tribal Council, it's fairly predictable when John doesn't give her the necklace and instead gives it to Amy, since he is certain she isn't going home anyways. This time, Eliza sticks to her word and votes with the younger women, but it still doesn't work out for her as Lisa flips to the older women and Mia is voted out 5-3. to three. Mia, the tribe has spoken. Episode 4 begins with Eliza calling Lisa a B for flipping her vote, which is a strange reaction when Eliza did this as well and no one called her a B. When she voted against Mia, that totally blindsided me. And I was like, that bitch. Lisa and Eliza then get into a spat as Eliza calls her a hypocrite and Lisa says, hey, I have the right to change my mind. This public confrontation though, doesn't seem like the right way to handle this at all for Eliza. I've been given the truth all along. Except today. You have the nerve. Same thing. Yeah. You have your nerve. The women go on to win the reward challenge, and this might be the best reward ever so far in Survivor, as they get a bush guy to come live with them for 24 hours, where he wastes no time showing them where food is, how to chop a coconut, how to make their shelter better to sleep in. He is the master of all trades, and by the end of his time with them, the women get pretty emotionally attached and sing him a song. Having Da here was absolutely incredible, and I was surprised at how emotionally attached we all got to Da just within 24 hours. I mean, we all were like practically crying when he left. At the immunity challenge, it is a puzzle with a collar, and Eliza is put into that collar leader role and guides the women to another victory. Yes, sir! Wins immunity! Their second challenge in a row. We move on to episode 5 where a literal earthquake happens on the island and a metaphorical earthquake happens in the game as the tribes drop their buffs and get swapped up. Drop your buffs. Scout, pick one woman to join Rory. Eliza. Eliza joins Rory. Eliza basically stays on Yasser where the women hold a 5-2 lead over the men, so she is seemingly in a good spot. However, things get cold back at camp as Amy wants nothing to do with the men and she sets the tone that they are not one unified tribe. It is still men versus women. We were showing the guys all kinds of stuff and I said, oh, I'm going to show them how to crack the coconut. Amy was like, why? I'm like, because to show them how to do it, it's cool. Well, why would you want to do that? I'm like... Why not? Knowing that they are in the hot seat, Bubba tries to whisper to his old tribe to throw the challenge, but they pretty much ignore him, and Amy does overhear what he is trying to do. Curious. Think about the merge. The women do lose immunity, and back at camp, Eliza says she doesn't want to vote out either guy as they need them to help them win challenges. Lisa then makes the obvious point of, well, if we're not going to vote out a guy, we have to vote out one of us, and Eliza just gives her like this crazy facial reaction like, yeah, and it'll probably be you. Now we're going to be down to just one guy on our team, and then we're going to have really physical challenges, and what? We're not going to kick one of us off. At Tribal Council, the women stay strong and vote out Bubba six to one. Bubba, tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. The next episode brings with it a unique reward challenge as each tribe has to catch a bunch of pigs in a pen and put them in their tribe's pen. It is a fun, messy challenge, but Eliza does terribly. And while she is not the sole reason for the loss, she isn't a help either. Eliza trying, she can't do it. Back at camp, Leanne, Rory, and Lisa are annoyed by their perception of Eliza slacking off in that last challenge and seemingly not wanting to get dirty at all. I'm a little bothered that Eliza didn't want to, it seemed like she didn't want to get dirty or something, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, Eliza's, she's killing this team. She's killing our tribe. I'm aggravated because I think she's the reason we lost. In fact, I know she is. Eliza then cries and opens up to Amy about what happened and she says she wishes Scout wasn't on their tribe so Eliza could have done the very easy job of just opening the gate for everyone. It comes across as really whiny especially considering that Eliza is 21 and Scout is 59 with a bad knee. I like Scout as a person. I wish she wasn't here. I just think that if she wasn't here that would have been a challenge where I would have been able to be gatekeeper because it's like easy for her to come back and be like good job guys and like you know then I feel like because 
I know I didn't do a good job. The women go on to lose immunity and back at camp, the roles are reversed as Leanne feels bad for being so terrible at that immunity challenge and Eliza is the empathetic ear. I just feel so bad. Trust me, I know how you feel and everybody has, it. I mean, don't worry. A monumental shift happens for the tribe though as Rory ends up not being target number one and instead Lisa digs her own grave when she makes a comment that Amy perceives as a threat and instead of Rory going home, Lisa is voted out four to two. Lisa, the tribe has spoken. True to my word. Episode seven sees Rory trying to get in good with Amy. He knows he's probably the next to go. He is the last man on their tribe. And uh, he gets pretty mad though, when he can't believe they would rather keep Eliza around who he sees as unworthy. Eliza over me? How much can she bring to this team and how much have I already brought to the table? There's no way in hell I want to be eliminated before Eliza. The Aster tribe finally has a stroke of luck though, as they win the reward challenge, which comes with coffee along with pictures and letters from home. Eliza gets super excited to see a picture of her dog and the whole moment is just sweet for everyone. Okay, you. That's my dog. We were pointing out family members and dogs. It was a really nice moment for all of us because getting to share everyone's family members with them and getting to see all their pictures, it just, oh, it just, it touched my heart. All jacked up on coffee, Rory almost single-handedly helps Yasser win the immunity challenge and all seems to be going well until the next episode when he paints everyone on his tribe as incompetent and says, Eliza's like a little kid. He claims he has taught her how to make a fire multiple times and she still doesn't know how to boil a pot of water. Eliza, she's like a little kid. I have personally taught Eliza at least four or five times how to make a fire and she's still struggling with boiling a pot of water. Then it finally happens. Uh oh. Drop your bucks. Woo! You are now one tribe. Woo! What's up? They are merged and the women hold a six to four lead over the men. After enjoying the merge feast, Eliza tells us just how much she missed Julie, which seems a bit out of place for her story since we never really saw them together in the pre-merge. In fact, we always saw like Eliza with Amy, but not with Julie. But she does say she feels very close to her. I miss the girls who we'd had on our original Yasser tribe. Julie especially, because we like got really close in the first 12 days and then, you know, being split apart for the last nine days, I've missed her a bunch. Despite all the work done by the men to flip Twilight and Julie to their side, it doesn't work. And Rory is voted out six to four. Rory, the tribe has spoken. The next episode brings with it a familiar type of challenge. Each person answers questions, and if they get one right, they can lay a skull head of someone else. If all three of a player's skull heads are lit up, they are out. The men predictably get eliminated one after another, but then Eliza is the first woman out, and she says this shows exactly where she is in the pecking order of the Women's Alliance, and this creates a small little uh, spat with Scout, which has Chris cracking up. Eliza is out of the game shows you just where you are, doesn't it, boys? She's a smart one. And you're really not. Back at camp, Scout is pretty condescending when she picks a fight with Eliza and treats her like a little kid. And Eliza doesn't handle this very well, and who could blame her? Little one, look at you. She's all pissed off. I felt that there were two women in particular, Scout and Twyla, who were after me. And Scout kind of said, oh, little one, get over it. It's just a game. But it was more being taken out in that way. It is personal. It's definitely personal. The men see how Eliza is being treated by the other women and think this is their opening. They don't consider having Eliza join their alliance and instead think that maybe they can convince the women to vote her out before another man is sent home. Scout don't like Eliza already. Scout will burn Eliza. We got to take Eliza out. There's no way we, we have got that. to totally sabotage Eliza's game. Yeah. And send her home. Julie and Leanne come back from their reward with chicken wings in tow. However, the men are all out at sea still. So the women jump on this opportunity to run into the forest and eat those wings without any of the men knowing. Julie lifts up her pants and she had tied a bag of leftover chicken wings to her leg. I feel like such a like a bad kid. I know. Man. What is made even worse is that the women then act like they never had chicken wings bring back. All they got to bring back was the bones and the men are very grateful. They don't know any better. And the women all keep their mouths closed about the truth. The guys, when they came back, were really excited about getting the bones and we had to pretend to be excited about the bones too because they didn't know that we had just had chicken wings. The next moment is not anything game changing as Eliza gets to go to tree mail. And instead of there being just a note, there is a note and a pig who absolutely refuses to be dragged by the rope that is wrapped around him. No, come on. Piggy. Come on. Piggy. 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 
Unbelievable! Piggy, come on! No! Of course I had to go with this tree now. The feud between Eliza and Scout continues as the men try to talk to Scout, and while Scout never says, yes, I am voting with you to get her out, she does say multiple times how much she cannot stand her. Eliza and myself have an ongoing tension. You know, she, she knows that she annoys me, and I'm sure I annoy her, so that's going on. At Tribal Council, it says a lot when Eliza explains that she is the only woman there with her backpack, and that is how confident the women are that they're all sticking together except Eliza. I'm the only woman tonight who came with a bag packed because even when I think that it's absolutely certain, I don't want to have, you know, Rory syndrome and start to feel confident and then get booted. Despite all of this worrying, she only receives one vote as Sarge is voted out instead. Sarge, the tribe spoken. Episode 10 starts with Scout working on eliminating Eliza and these two just do not get along. But the even bigger note is how she also wants Amy eliminated, that meaning Scout wants Amy eliminated, not Eliza, which is news as there are still two men remaining. The plan that I have would take out Eliza, then take out Amy. We gotta get Amy out of there. The reward challenge actually has Eliza, Chris, Amy, and Chad winning it, which lets them go to a local village and spend the night there. While she is gone, Scout tries to get everyone who is remaining at camp to vote Eliza out. And at this point, it is important to note that almost everyone says they would be ecstatic to do this and have it happen. You know, I'm booting Eliza. Good riddance. Y'all will see me ecstatic. I think everybody would be ecstatic. Yeah, we, you know, her time's definitely overdue. And by now, I think it is safe to read into all this as Eliza can never win this season at this point. She seems to have no one's respect, and I am not sure who she could sit against at the end of the game and have the jury pick her over them. It feels a lot like at this point, she's just playing to get second place. Upon returning from the reward, Eliza senses that things are off with those who didn't get to go with them as they don't seem too pleased to see her or anyone else that came with her back at camp, which is a good observation. When we we got back, it was as if they couldn't be less excited to see us. Before Tribal Council, talks are swirling about whether to cut another guy or to finally bite the bullet and vote out Eliza. Amy straight up says that she doesn't want any guys remaining before they vote out Eliza though. Scout and I were definitely at odds about how the vote should go. She really wants to get rid of Eliza. I don't think it's time for Eliza to be voted off yet. I just don't. To further prove how much Eliza isn't respected, Twilight calls her a B, and Julie says Eliza is aggravating everyone. That's right, the same Julie that Eliza feels close to. Pretty much no one is coming to her defense, not even in a confessional. I told Amy early, whatever you all decide, come back and let me know, because it don't matter. I just don't like the bitch. I ain't like I it from day one. I, I want to get rid of her. <laughs> I know. She's aggravating everybody. At the Tribal Council, the women do stick together though and vote out Chad six to two. Chad, tribe spoken. Episode 11 begins and there is only one man remaining, Chris. Eliza's time left in the game gets shorter with every man being eliminated and her likely being the next one to go once Chris is voted out. Back at camp, Chris tells everyone how Scout and Twyla try to flip the numbers on the women to get out Amy first. This is not completely true based on what we have seen so far as it was supposed to go Eliza and then Amy, but he is spinning a narrative and it's getting people's minds to work. Scout thought she could get you and Leanne to vote for Eliza. And when Eliza was gone, and Scout, Twyla, me and Chad would have the numbers on you, Amy, and Leanne. The reward challenge comes and it is a family visit, sort of, as each castaway gets to talk to their loved ones through a video call and Eliza just loves her mom a ton. There she is. I wish I could give you a great big hug and I miss you so much, sweetheart. Eliza does win the reward challenge and it turns out that Jeff pulled a fast one on everyone as the loved ones are actually there in person. Her mom gets to come back to camp with her for 24 hours and she is so happy to have her mom there that she is shaking. And I can't believe you're here. I can't believe you're so I want to share everything with my mom. My mom is my best friend in the entire world and I could not be more excited that she's here with us. Eliza's mom is the real star here as she literally gives Eliza the shirt off her back and is now in just a bra. And she tells us that she worried about Eliza being gone because of all the things that could possibly go wrong, like catching life ending diseases or possibly not being able to floss. I was worried about bug bites. I was worried about parasites. I was worried that she wouldn't be flossing every day. 
I was worried about Ebola virus. After Amy wins the individual immunity challenge, the women get together and decide to spare Chris for one more tribal council and instead take their shot at voting out Eliza instead. All right, we made our decision. Eliza. All right. All right. But big things are brewing as Twyla and Scout are tired of Amy being in charge of everything and they talk to Chris and say, let's flip this game. Twyla, Scout, and Chris can change everything if only they can bring Eliza in with them. Chris knows to run through an open door when he sees one and he talks to Eliza, who is skeptical as she doesn't trust Twyla and Scout about any of this and she thinks it could be a trick, but honestly at this point, what does she have to lose? She's probably going next otherwise. Chris pulls me aside and says, Twyla and Scout discussed with him the possibility of changing this game around and the only way to do it would be with my vote. Eliza is about to do one of the most boss things all game when at Tribal. She is paranoid as usual. Nothing new there. However, when the first vote is revealed for her, Amy nods at her like, this is your time to go. Eliza. But the tables quickly turn as right before the last vote is read for Leanne, she nods back at Amy like, no, it's time for your partner to go instead. Three votes Leanne, three votes Eliza. I'll read the last vote. And in a four to three vote, the flip is successful and Leanne is voted out. Leanne, the tribe has spoken. Episode 12 begins with Amy being so, so mad, and she goes and picks a fight with Twyla since Twyla swore on her son that she is with Amy, and in a surprising move, Eliza pretty much stays out of this completely, despite it being about her. You're the one who made the four-way alliance. Four yeah, I'm down totally all the way. Yeah, I'm in. Screwed you, didn't I? Eliza then goes on to win the car reward challenge, and Amy and Chris get to join her on their overnight reward. While eating dinner, Amy makes a pitch to them both. She says, why not flip on Scout and Twyla? and join me instead. But this is a terrible move to seriously consider since it makes little sense for their end game and Chris knows it. Something that I think would be really smart for you guys is to break up Scout, Scout and, Twyla. and Twyla. She's so 40. You know, does she think I'm stupid? You know? She's still working Eliza though. She's strategizing, she's playing the game. Eliza is friends with Amy though and she does seem swayed to at least consider what Amy is saying until Chris explains to her how the position they are currently in in their current final four is perfect for them both. And look at our competition. I know. A 16 year old woman and Twilight. <laughs> I mean, why don't we just get the checks out now? But Eliza makes a good point that if it weren't for Scout and Twyla, this conversation wouldn't be happening because she would have been voted out of the game at the last tribal council, in large part thanks to Amy. It makes me want to puke listening to you say how Scout and Twyla have never written my name down. They're so great. But if it hadn't have been for them, then I wouldn't be okay. here. Amy doesn't stop trying though. She continues to guilt Eliza more and more until they finally fall asleep and even tries guilting her back at camp when they return from the reward. We should stop talking about it. <laughs> because I don't expect any miracle from you. I should just be quiet. I feel like I've stood up for you five million times. And if then you kind of like throw me off to the side at the very end of the game, that would hurt my feelings. Before tribal council, Eliza is talking with Julie and says that she told Twyla she hangs out with people who are not in her alliance because uh they're way more fun than Twyla, which of course makes Twyla nervous and uh, is a terrible thing to say because she's hanging out with people who are not in her alliance. She's going, oh my God, Eliza's been off with them all day. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm like, I just like spending time with them. Right. They're just Does more fun than you, you are. Despite all of the guilting she did, Eliza still loves Amy and makes an impassioned speech about Amy being the big sister she never had, but always wanted. And this makes them both cry. You know, she's just, she's the, the big sister I never had. And yeah, I'd miss Amy a lot. Amy is still voted out four to two with only Julie voting with her. Amy, the tribe has spoken. Episode 13 starts with Twyla being mad because at the last tribal, Eliza briefly mentioned how Twyla swore on her son to Amy and lied. While it was a fairly simple statement of fact, Twyla takes this personally and feels like salt is being rubbed in her wound on purpose, despite Eliza apologizing. Sorry, T. The only one that I've got to condole with or say anything to is my son when I get home. The rest of you mother can kiss my... Later on, Eliza is looking for some bananas to eat and Twyla refuses to tell her where she buried them. This all devolves into Eliza being annoyed that she can't eat the bananas that the tribe has and Twyla and Scout pick on her like schoolyard bullies. It really makes you feel bad for Eliza since she is aligned with them and yet she's still being treated like this. Won't tell us where they are. Are you ready for a banana, little one? That's so patronizing that you're acting like a kid though. Get over it. Touché. <laughs> 
She got you. She got you, Twyla. <laughs> Understandably, she then talks to Chris about flipping on Scout and Twyla and going to the final three with Julie instead. This seems like a very revenge oriented plan, which usually is not good at all. But here it's very understandable considering that Chris and Julie are nice to her while Scout and Twyla are just jerks. She wants to stick it to them. However, Julie would be harder to beat in the end. But as we determined earlier, who is Eliza going to beat at the final two? And at this point, I'm pretty sure Julie's more likely to take Eliza to final two than Sky or Twyla, so why not? If Julie stays in the game, we're automatic final, final three. Sky or Twyla, can you imagine? Um, yeah. At the immunity challenge, Eliza makes sure no one will be flipping on her as she wins immunity for herself. Here comes Eliza, number five, and with that, Eliza wins immunity. Eliza then continues to talk to Chris about not going to final four with Twilight Scout. What makes this bad is that Twyla is right behind her and obviously hears all of this and a fight predictably ensues. It's One of the two of us could end up right, in the final three with the two of them, right. meaning 100% we do not end up in the final two. I don't know, I just feel like you're with me. You got immunity. You're right, I do have immunity tonight, but if I don't have immunity tomorrow night, then who's gone, T? I think you're a liar, T. At Tribal Council, Twyla airs all of her dirty laundry as she says she does not think Eliza deserves to be here in the game at the final five. Twyla, is there any way that somebody could be unworthy of winning? My personal opinion is yes, there is. It's me, by the way, in case anybody was wondering. Eliza flips on her final four and is super excited to vote for Twyla, thinking this is her time to go. I have been waiting to vote you off since the day I met you. I cannot believe that 36 days later, I'm finally getting this opportunity. But that ultimately doesn't happen as Julie goes home instead in a three to two vote. Julie, Travis spoken. It is finale time. Eliza versus Twyla versus Scout versus Chris. A very unlikely combination of characters to be at the final four considering how this game was playing out before they banded together. But here they are. At camp, Twyla and Eliza continue to feud as Twyla says, yeah, I meant what I said. I don't think you've earned your way to this spot in the game. And Eliza lashes back. And honestly, the entire fight is just completely unnecessary. I don't think you deserve to be here, Eliza. The only reason you're still here is because you've been riding everybody's coattails from day one. At least I've played the game and worked hard. Well, maybe that's how I'm playing the game. If you conserved your energy, maybe you could do better at challenges. Probably not, but maybe. Going into the next tribal council, she knows she needs immunity, or at least Chris needs it, so Scout and Twilight can go home. I really need immunity to stay in this game. Um, if I don't get immunity, I pray that it's Chris who does. Her wish half comes true as Chris does win the immunity challenge. I got it, I got it! Leading into tribal council, he tells Eliza he is voting with her, no doubts about it. However, he has said this to everyone left in the game, so it actually means nothing, but she doesn't know this, so she believes him, and frankly, we don't even know who is being truthful to anyone here. We're both gonna vote for Twyla, right. and whatever happens, happens. I'm lucky enough to be in the final four with someone that I feel that I can put all of my trust into it. At tribal council, it is time to vote, as even when voting, Eliza and Twyla just rip into each other. I am voting for you for the third time this game. You're like the cockroach that won't die under the refrigerator. Hopefully, you're going home tonight. You have drove me crazy from day one. If you go home tonight, it's gonna be the happiest night since I've been here. You got a lot of growing up to do. As it turns out, Chris was lying to Eliza and she is voted out three to one. And as her torch is snuffed, she gives Chris a death glare, which he just shrugs off. Eliza, trap spoken. So let's break this down. How was Eliza as a character? She was at the center of a lot of conflict this season, and frankly, conflict makes for fun television. It seemed like she was a nice, well-meaning person who people thought they could walk all over and pick on because she's like their little sister. While her personality and excessive talking did annoy many, she clearly was liked well enough to not just be voted out for most of the game. Her mom was amazing, and she clearly made some friends out there in Amy and Julie, and she never worked well with pigs. Her question at Final Tribal is still something I will never forget. You shocked me. Whereas I knew Twyla was going to be a deceptive lying bitch, 
I did not know that you were a deceptive lying bitch too. This season would have been less fun without Eliza, and that really says a lot when you are an irreplaceable part of a good season of Survivor. Out of 33 character moments shown on the show, 13 were heroic and 20 were villainous, making Eliza Orleans a villain character on Survivor Vanuatu. Now, how was Eliza as a strategist? Despite how often everyone seemingly wanted to vote her out, it became very clear she was only ever playing to reach second place. She played a solid game that was made impressive by the timing of the moves she did make, but she wasn't ever really respected. Most notably though of those moves is when she trusted Chris and aligned with him, along with Twilight and Scout, two people she greatly disliked, to flip the game on its head. She put her personal feelings aside to make it further, and that is something to be commended here in Old School Survivor, as it doesn't happen very often, if at all. She did build up good social bonds with some people, but also did the opposite with others. It almost felt like every time she would make a good move, she would turn around and make a bad move as well. A more mature Eliza would probably do even better, but I am still not sure if even then she could have made it further as she was basically needing immunity to make it past the final four. Out of 42 strategic moments shown on the show, 22 were smart and 20 were dumb, making Eliza Orleans a smart strategist on Survivor of Anawatu. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content you see here, then please consider supporting me on this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes all of this possible. So thank you, and thank you for watching.